The Porsche Taycan is an incredible EV, despite what some people may think, but it has one major flaw. We're gonna talk about what that is, how to rectify it, as well as a little bit of behind the scenes tinkering to make sure it's right. Hello, I'm Daniel from Carmworks, and you join us here today for a alignment video specifically with the Porsche Taycan. And there's a reason why we've actually dedicated a video towards a Taycan alignment. It's because these guys munch tires and we're gonna talk a little bit about how we can make the tire wear slightly better and the reasons for that tire wear. So what we have here is our latest and greatest alignment, four wheel alignment tool that is very useful for putting right the wrongs and making sure that these cars handle well. So before we get into that part, I'm gonna get my glamorous assistant to pass me a instrument, thank you very much, very smooth, which I'm gonna showcase some of the areas of this car which is a little bit unique to others. So you have a thing called Cameron Caster, which I don't wanna tell you guys what it is. If you already know, but all the same, I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown. Um, effectively, the camera Caster are the two main areas, or two of the main areas, which is why some of these cars wear through their tires. So these cars have quite a lot of negative camber, which effectively means the tire itself, this is set standard, so there's no camber on it. The tires lean inwards, and that effectively means it's lifting up the outer edge of the tire, and the inside of the tire is where a lot of the contact patches. This is a bit extreme, but I'm just doing that to showcase to you. And the reason why that wears is you've got so much weight on the inside of the tire, and that wears the inner edges of the tires, which we've seen quite a lot of. This particular car, even though it's only done about 7,000 miles, it's already gone through a set of front tires. They were to the cords and it was because the inside had worn out. So that's camber. Then you've got caster and that's effectively, if you draw a line through the tire or the wheel, that's the angle of which the tire is then contacting the floor. So again, right now it's sat, there's zero caster. These cars have a lot of front caster, which means the tire effectively is angling forward. So imagine where we are here, the contact point will actually be further round. So it's leaning further into the ground, which causes a lot of wear. Upside gives you loads of grip. Not great if you want to keep some mileage on these tires without having to replace them. So let's talk a little bit about this particular car and what we're going to do. So a couple areas that you can change on this car is toes and cambers. You can't change the caster, that is something that's gonna be static regardless, but you can adjust the toes and the cambers. Easier to do on the rear, the front, the toe is what normally most people, ourselves included, will be changing. You can change camber as well, but it's very involved. It's not a quick job. And in this particular instance, we've already done a set down to see where the car actually is with its alignment. And we're pretty happy with the front camber angles. But to talk you through, and Tim's gonna put a nice display up on the screen now where I can talk through some of the numbers. So if we look at the beforehand, we've got a reasonable amount of disparity between the left and right on the front. So it's got some toe in on the front left and some toe out on the front right. That in itself isn't gonna help handling, but it's also not gonna help tire wear. We've also got in the green there, one degree of camber on the left and just over on the right, which actually is in spec and that's okay. On the rear end, we've got a little bit, again, disparity between the left and the right with a little bit of toe in, and the camber is quite a lot at one degree in 46 minutes and 36, sorry, 37 minutes on the right-hand side. That in itself is not a huge issue, but when you put it into its sports mode, so the Sports Plus, it lowers the suspension down, which is, increases the camber even further and also plays around with the toe. So if you do drive it in its Sports Plus, where the suspension's as low as possible, that's going to increase tire wear even further, which is not great for a car that weighs the weight of the moon. So what we're going to do is adjust the toes and the cambers on the back and adjust the toes on the front. And we'll show you afterwards what it looks like. And we're gonna tweak this so it has a little bit better tire wear across the whole car, as well as still being within specification from the manufacturer. Very lengthy. Hopefully you guys are still stuck with me through that massively boring speech. Let's get some tinkering on the go and we'll show you guys the results in a minute.
So the Taycan's now all finished and it's handling fantastic. It's now been sorted out. Sorting the rear toes out is quite interesting. There's very limited room and you do need some specialist tools. A um, couple of things to note, however, if you do plan on doing this yourself or taking it to a tyre shop or whoever it might be local to you, not everyone can be located on the south coast of England where we are. Uh, there is a lockout mode to lock the suspension. So when you lift it, it keeps the suspension in place. If you don't do that, your alignment is going to be all kinds of wrong. So that's very important. And the other thing to note, which I didn't actually mention earlier, is when you do put it in Sport Plus, which then drops the ride height, it really does ramp the camber up. So it's over two degrees negative camber on the back end alone, which is pretty much race car specification camber, which is just madness for a road car. And that's why you're getting the tire wear. So we're gonna put a display up now, which will show you the before and afters. And that going through that effectively shows where the car was versus where it is now. So if you have, have a look, obviously you can see where it was incorrect on the left hand side and where it's now in the green, it's all in alignment. So what we've tried to do is balance it so it's still within the specifications, but when it is in the sports mode, it's not gonna throw it too far out of the tolerances and, and wear the tires excessively. Um, we've managed to straighten up the rear toes and cambers. Um, if you have a look on the rear camber now, it's down to the minute perfect left to right. And as I said, that is on the lower end of the scale, but it means when it does crank that camber on, it's not gonna chuck it massively out. And the same thing for the toes as well on the back. Um, and then the front is a relatively straightforward adjustment. More than anything, this just needed to be squared up because it was a little bit out. So now all of that's complete. I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. As said, there's quite a few elements to making sure that these handle well. Cars are sensitive and you might think, well, do a few minutes of toe or camber make a great deal of difference? And the answer is yes. If you do have a disparity left to right, it can handle really poorly. And as I said, it is very crucial with a car like this. When you've got that much camber and caster, they wear and eat into those tires. So it does need to be tracking in the right direction. And a few little tweaks, which we've managed to do today, will have put it right where it needs to be. If you do want to know a little bit more, we actually have a section on our website where we actually talk a little bit more into Cameron Caster, as well as, how, well, effectively we've got an encyclopedia for upgrades you can do for track cars um, and general performance-based upgrades, something that we do here. So if you have some spare time and you fancy a, a nice, nice cup of tea and some reading time, go onto the website and check that out. Um, for any alignment that you might have yourself, if you do want to bring your Porsche here, or another car for that matter, it's something that we can handle. We have everything from high-end exotics, cars like these, to track cars and just everyday cars as well. So, hope you enjoyed that video. It's been fun to work on this one. And let's see how many more Tycons we have coming through the workshop in the coming weeks. See you guys soon.